Hello everyone and welcome to an Unfiltered Gamer board game review. I'm Callie here with Michael and today we're talking about Shake That City by AEG. Shake That City is a city builder tile placement game for one to four players. It takes about 20 to 40 minutes to play for ages 10 and up. And in the game Shake That City, you are going to be gathering your own board as well as an outskirts area which tells you how you can gain more points by placement. Additionally, you're going to have a ton of different types of buildings, a score sheet, and a round marker with some aids that explain what all the buildings do. And basically on your turn, you're going to be taking this little shaker here that you have to build. You're going to shake it up, you're going to place it down, you're going to push this little button here, and then you're going to lift lift it and it's going to create a three by three grid and players are then in turn going to choose colors place those colors in a three by three on their grid somewhere and place down the colored tiles that make up those specific colored markers and you're basically just trying to fill up your board when you fill up a row or a column you can potentially score yourself some bonus points and additionally each of the buildings have their own unique scoring method that are going to score you points at the end of the game based on how they're placed after 15 rounds the player with the highest score will win and that's basically how the game works we'll talk about setup how to play and of course course, our review. To set up the game Shake That City by AEG, you're first going to gather player boards based on the number of players. Each player will get one of these main boards and place it in front of them. There is actually a front and a back where you can play the more advanced version, but for this mode, the beginning mode, I suggest you just play with this one here. You'll place it down and then you're going to get markers for each of the adjoining spaces on the side of your player board. And they're all gonna be the same, it's all gonna be equal. Uh, you're gonna place like the this one here, the, the rainbow one on the far top right, and then the black and blue and green and so on and so, so forth. So the first player, they could go in any order, but everyone else should follow that same order. So it randomizes it a little bit, but everyone's following the same They're going to all have the same constraints, yes. yes. You're going to take the markers, these boards here, basically references to what all the different buildings do, and place them within reach of all players so that all players can see them and know what they do. You will also take the round marker, place the marker on one, and put it down next to one of the other references. And then, of course, there's the scoring tile uh, board, which you can go ahead and place somewhere within reach, and the shake that city construction. You'll place this here, take all the cubes from uh, the bag and place them inside here, and put this right in the middle of the playing area so that everybody can see. And the last thing you do is you take each of the colored buildings and set them aside in their color along the uh, table, and everybody can go ahead and gather those when they need them. The first player leader is going to be the one to start the round by shaking the box carefully and <laughs> side by side and then pushing the little mechanism to release certain of the cubes. And you should have a three by three grid of different colored cubes. If you don't, just try again and, and see um, until you get it. Then that first player is going to choose one of those color types. So they could choose the black, which represents factories, red, which represents the houses, blue, which represents shops, gray, which represents roads, and green, which represents parks. Each of those tile types have different ways to score. And once you've chosen your color, then you'll place it somewhere on your uh, player board in that same exact configuration. So like Michael has the blue shops here, they have to be one space away from each other, just like depicted on the grid. And you can choose any three by three on your grid. It doesn't mm -hmm. need to be in the corners. It can literally be the, this three by three right here, in which case you just place them and rearrange them. Yeah, the orientation does matter and the exact placement does matter, but you could choose any kind of three by three grid space to place them in. Next, every other player will also choose a color, but they cannot choose the color that the first player chose. So that's the only restriction there. And you can do this simultaneously uh, as other players are are choosing and placing Yeah, their so once the down. first player chose, like if I chose blue here, then yeah. every other player could choose a color at the same time. Callie mm -hmm. could go for red, Alicia could go for red, and Caleb could go for red, or any combination of any other tiles and decide how many buildings they want to place by what is available to them on yeah. the pool. You must place all of, if there are two cubes, you can't just choose to place one red one, you have to place two red ones. 
though. You can't ever just place what, how many One. you want. It yeah. has to be mm -hmm. the exact amount that is currently listed on here. Yeah. Then, after that, you'll take those cubes back into the Shake That City box. You'll move the brown tracker up one, and the next player will become the lead or uh, main player. Also, any time during your turn, you may fulfill one of the, re or more of the requirements here along the edges. If you do, and you can fulfill either one of those, you'll flip it over to denote that you scored that. Most so. of them are just filling the row with tiles, and then others are you have a certain number of tiles of those types so in this that row. one here is fill up this left side uh, column mm -hmm. and you just fill it up with any tiles. Any, any tile. The other one is on the right hand side and that does have four blue buildings on this mm -hmm. column. So you're already halfway there with two. <laughs> then you'll flip it over to show that you scored it and you could do that just uh, when it happens anytime. The corner piece is unique in that you'll score if you have two of each tile type anywhere on your board, then anytime you can flip that over and you'll have scored those points. So play will continue until we get to the final round. So in the final three rounds, there's no longer a restriction on which color you can choose. So even if you're not the first player, you can choose any color. So if you're the first player and you choose blue, every other player can also choose mm -hmm. blue in addition, especially because there's limitations At to the map. At the end, you're not gonna have space always to place all of the available options. So it's great to have more options there. Then in the final round, after the final round, you'll score up your points. So each of the building types scores differently. And it's noted here on the player, on the handy board here for scoring. So roads, you want your roads to be on the edge or connected to other roads that go to the edge. That will score you points for each of those roads. The shops, you wanna be either connected to the edge or connected to a road. And you'll score more points if you can get those closer to the city. The factories like to be next to roads or and or next to other factories. Houses, they mostly like to be by themselves, but they do not like to be next to factories. And finally, the parks like to be next to homes and or factories. Yep, and then you score up all your points on your grid as well as any of these tiles that you flipped mm -hmm. over. And whoever has the most points is the winner. To track the score, just go ahead and use this little note sheet here and note the winner at the very bottom. And Michael won, of course, this game <laughs> that he's showing. <laughs> Shake That City by AEG is a tile placement game. It's a bit of a puzzle game, and it's about placing the correct tiles in the correct areas at the correct time. You're not going to have all of the choices, but you'll have most of the choices most of the time. Trying to delineate which of the tiles are the best to place on your board, as well as if you choose a certain tile set, what's it like that likely that other players will need that as well? Do you want to hate draft tiles for yourself and for not for the other players? <laughs> or do you want to just go simply for the best tiles and the best placement possible on your grid? There's a ton of rounds in the game and your objective is just to kind of score the points based on what they're re requesting you to do so on this little grid here, as as well as, of course, trying to meet the requirements of your grid on the outskirts, all these bonus points here, which are worth quite a bit at the end of the game. Yes, I like that there are multiple kind of levels of thinking. First, you have this, just the spatial reasoning of, okay, where could I fit these on my grid? And then you have the how the build, di different building types interact with each other, what can go next to what. And then finally, the third kind of level is the scoring on the outside, trying to achieve a lot of those. I think that was the main reason that you won. Yeah, I was able to flip over more showing. outside yes. tiles uh -huh. than uh, than have to do. Well, I, I got a score for placement as well, because each of these yes. can score you quite but a bit you, of points. I think you have to do well on all of them, but um, definitely the, don't forget about the outside ones. <laughs> this is not really a game about specifically trying to set up a strategy for one or two mm -hmm. of the different city tiles. You want to score all the tiles you can in the best placement possible, and then you want to fulfill the goals marked on the outside as well if you can. The more points for each of the objectives you get, the more likely you're going to win the game. Mm -hmm. The game also denotes some additional unique twists and turns in it. There is a few variants as yeah. well, as well as going ahead and flipping the board over, which can change the way the game is played based on how you want to place certain there's things. There's a construction variant which adds some complexity and there's a family variant which lowers the complexity. 
the quality of the game. I really, really enjoy the quality of Shake That City. All the boards are very high quality. This is a prototype and there are gonna be changes. There are a few different things on the boards here that are just denoted incorrectly, but those have been addressed. Um, the double thickness on even the tiles, as well as even just the small tiles here are very nice. Everything here is really well done and really easy to manipulate on the board. And the sort of shaking component box actually works really well. You'll see, you just put it together. It came together pretty easily and it's, it's not glued or anything. You just have rubber bands, which allow you to do the oh, push mechanism like that. There are a few like little that. issues <laughs> with the little mechanism here. It's possible that extra cubes can fall out. It's possible that a cube might be missed when pushing this down. It's not a huge concern, but it is one small thing I did note about the game. If you're not careful, if you do not shake it well enough, or if you shake it too hard, things can kind of pop out and you might lose a cube, which you should be careful about. But otherwise, I don't see any problem with the construction or quality of this game. Artwork. This game reminds me of like City Skylines. It reminds me of Tiny Towns. Suburbia. In Suburbia. It's a uh, really, really nice artwork. It's basically, you're just gonna have different type of city tiles. All the, each, each of the tiles of the different colors are gonna have the same type of artwork that are placed down for easy to understand, to see what your grid is looking like. Yeah. All the colors are unique. The colors are vibrant and distinct, which is nice. Yep, yeah. um, all the boards look nice as well. There's not a huge amount of artwork, no. I would say, in the game, but what's but the there main is nice. Artwork, yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> it's really the well done. Cover and rule books. And I think the theme works really well for the game as well. You are building your yeah. own little city. You are trying to connect based on what these city pieces want, and it all comes together at the very end of the game to have a very nice grid of colors that look really well at, on display. This is a game that when somebody walks by and sees you playing it, they will also be interested in playing it. Not only for the unique, I would say, kind of gimmick to the whole shaking that city with this thing here as opposed to just pulling from a bag and making a three by three. This has kind of a cool little function there, mm -hmm. but also the boards as yes, well. Yes, but also the, the creation, right? You get a, a cool city to show off at the end of the game. If you are a family who enjoys puzzle games, you are going to enjoy Shake That City. There is enough variance to change the game up, but every single time you play this game, it's gonna feel very similar to the previous times that you played it. It's kind of like Tiny Towns. If you're a fan of Tiny Towns, then Shake That City is going to be right up your alley. If you're expecting a unique, different varianting experience each time, it's probably not gonna be this game. This game is gonna always associate with these buildings need to be placed yeah, here, and this needs to be placed there. Yeah, there's only five different types of buildings, but... But there are additional yeah. variations mm -hmm. to the game that will change things up and add a little bit more complexity to your game. Overall though, Shake That City is an excellent puzzle game. It's a lot of fun. It's very simple to set up, very simple to play, and easy to jump back in again. And once you've played once, you're most likely going to want to play again because you will get better as you go along. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Shake That City by AEG. If you're interested in picking up the game, there will be a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and check it out. You can also go ahead and head over to our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And then every Sunday at 6.30, p.m. PST, what do we do? We play games live, just like this one. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. You can actually see us play games just like this one, like she said. And that's pretty much it. We have a new game coming out soon called Zero Day. There's Callie's game, Moonshell, which is currently available at moonshellgame.com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dante, <laughs> licking away. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing, seeing you guys, guys next time. time.